Today we're talking about chili powder and I make this fresh about every two or three weeks. I don't like to keep it longer than say a month because it starts to lose flavor and potency. Now you can use a lot of different kinds of peppers. These are Anaheim's um, but I like peppers that aren't too hot personally because I can just use more and I'm after the flavor not the heat. If I want it hot I'll add you know some hot peppers to it. You can see that these peppers are very ripe to the point where they're starting to shrivel up. And that's good, but they don't have to be shriveling. Just make sure that they're super ripe. Now this is different than the chili powder you get at the store because that stuff is usually, well, at least in the States here, it's usually mixed with coriander, garlic, and cumin and stuff like that. This is much more versatile since it's only chilies. You can use it almost anywhere that you would use a ripe pepper and just in almost any cuisine. I mean, you can hardly think of a cuisine where it wouldn't fit at all. Um, it's just extremely versatile. I use it almost every day. Now if you don't have a super dry hot climate, I mean really hot and dry, you'll probably have to cut the peppers over to dry them or dry them in a dehydrator. You can't just string them up like you can with small chilies and let them dry because they'll mold inside and mold is very toxic so you don't want that. I tried using this dehydrator this year, but I actually didn't like it that much. Uh, it uses a lot of power and I'm on solar so I could only run it during the day. And I just wasn't impressed that much, so I ended up taking all the peppers out and drying them in my solar dehydrator. So you may be saying, Stephen, I don't have a solar dehydrator. Well, actually you probably do. The front of your car is about the best solar dehydrator ever. In fact, sometimes it'll be too hot and you'll have to crack the windows just to cool it off a little bit. So I like to store mine in a jar. Obviously, you could make strings and dry those in your car. That would be fine. Um, whatever. Uh, I just store them in a jar until I'm ready to make chili powder, which is obviously often. All right, I have my jar of dried chilies here. And I'm gonna get rid of the stem and then get rid of the seeds. Now these are Anaheim's. I like Anaheim's. They have a real rich flavor. They're good for drying. They do well here. They're productive. But remember that, uh, you know, even paprika, all it is is ripe, you know, dried and ground peppers. And there's all different kinds of peppers with all different kinds of flavors. They don't have to be special peppers necessarily. It's really better to do it in the oven. That does the best job but I usually do it in a pan just because of convenience. And, you know, it's just wasteful to heat up the oven just to roast one batch of peppers. Now, I can't hardly grow enough peppers between, you know, hot sauce that I make. There's a video on that you can watch. I've already done that video. Um, paprika and chili powder, various kinds. Uh, strings of dried hot peppers. Pepperoncini. Uh, I make really good fermented pepperoncini. That'll be a video someday, but I didn't grow any pepperoncini this year. So you, you kind of want just one layer thick, you know, don't overdo it here. And you don't have to roast the peppers. They can just be really dry, but it adds another flavor dimension to roast them just a little bit. Like if they're at all moist and rubbery, then sometimes it's hard to grind them without at least toasting them enough to dry them out all the way. If I was to use as much as I want, I might use this much up in a week um, on the average. But as it is, this is a good sized batch that you can use up before it starts to go bad because once it stores for a little while, it's gonna start to lose, lose this vibrant red color and a lot of the flavor. Okay, you don't wanna put this on high heat, put it on real low heat because if you put it on high heat, you're gonna burn little spots all over the peppers before they really have a chance to toast. And if you walk away for just, um, you know, 30 seconds too long, you're going to start to burn them. So I like to keep it on a pretty, pretty low heat and just take your time. Now, if you know, don't walk off and leave it. But if you're just working around the kitchen, you'll smell it when it starts to go off. Okay, so they're starting to roast because I can smell them. And they'll start to look a little different, like almost puffy. And then they'll start to get dark spots where they're touching the pan. Now, again, if you do this in the oven then you'll get an even roast because it's hot air that's roasting the peppers whereas here it's mostly contact with the pan that's roasting the peppers so you're still going to get a pretty good effect where you'll get this um, kind of roasted overall flavor to your chili powder but there's no doubt that 
roasting them in the oven is roast them more evenly. Okay, now we're starting to see those dark spots there. So I don't want to go much further than that because those spots that are touching the pan are going to just burn. All right, that looks pretty good. I've got, um, you know, a few dark spots where they've been touching the pan. A lot of them have changed to this lighter looking color texture. It's hard to, hard to describe, but they're definitely a little different and I have a really delicious aroma emanating from the pan. Okay, we're just gonna dump these out on a plate to cool because when they're hot, they're all rubbery because they contain a lot of sugar. All right, this is just an old, you know, electric coffee grinder. I try to keep, I like to keep several of these for different purposes. Like I like to have one for spices that are spicy, uh, like cinnamon and cloves and stuff like that. Kind of stuff you'd associate more with uh, pumpkin pie or dessert or something. Um, you know, I like keep one for, for that, one for coffee, one that's dedicated just for chili powder. And yeah, I mean, the more the better. If I find one for like two or three bucks and it looks in good shape, I'll buy it, you know, thrift stores and stuff like that. But I have worn out quite a few of them over the years. Like the blades will eventually break or maybe from grinding stuff that's too big in there. And then I like to have one for just industrial stuff, you know, like grinding dried milk powder for casein or whatever weird projects I'm working on. So there we go. Beautiful stuff. And I wish you could smell this right now and taste it. Okay, now you really want to keep this in a tightly stoppered container. Oops. Let's try putting that on a piece of paper. That's better. Like I was saying, you really want to keep this stuff in a tightly stoppered jar because it contains a lot of sugar, which means it'll absorb moisture out of the air and stick together in a clump. Even in a jar, it'll still do that, but you can kind of just you know knock it around and knock it loose. But if you were to leave this off in just an average uh, humidity, it would definitely eventually turn into just a solid block. All right, I'm just gonna fry up some pork here while I talk. Now, I'm just burning some chilies. These are hot chilies I'm burning in the oil just to infuse the oil with flavor. So, um, yeah, in this case, what you don't wanna do with this stuff is burn it. You don't wanna burn the chili powder. So I'm gonna put this meat in and I wanna sear it. on one side and get it mostly cooked before I add the chili powder because the chili powder, I'll put some ginger in here. The chili powder is really prone to burning and sticking and if it burns a lot, you'll lose all the flavor. And so what I'll do is cook this most of the way, get a good sear on this side and then add the chili powder and um, you know, right at the end so it doesn't burn. Put some coriander in there. I keep my coriander and cumin in pepper grinders because that way it's always perfectly fresh. It's the same thing with the chili powder. You know, if you powder it ahead of time and then store it, like that stuff you buy in the store, you know, it just doesn't work that good. You lose all the potency. All right, now that this is most of the way cooked, I'll go ahead and put in a bunch of chili powder here some sugar, mm, sugar and pork. This is actually uh, dehydrated cane juice, which has a really nice roasted molasses -y kind of flavor. And then right at the end here, I'm gonna start stirring that around. Some 
see how red that oil is becoming. But I managed not to burn the chili powder, so that's important. So I use this stuff all over. I could make a long list of the places that I use it, and uh, but I won't. It's just really good. Try it and everything and see what you think. Soy sauce. It's gonna be good. <laughs> 